All right, just to note first that uh, this session will be recorded, uh, everyone. Uh, and so uh, welcome, welcome to the participants. Uh, thank you to, to for being here. Thank you to the other presenters and big thank you to Alice and the other organizers for putting together a lot of work for this week long seminar for DHS2 for the annual conference. So big thank you there as well. So this is the session for LMIS vision and use cases uh, for DHS2. Uh, so I'm Breno Horst, the LMIS technical lead, uh, working closely with George McGuire, who's the LMIS uh, technical advisor. We both began in the core team here at the University of Oslo in January. So in that time, we've really tried to consolidate the work around stock management and logistics, which has been actually going on for quite some time uh, with DHS2. It's not necessarily new, but we've consolidated a lot of that work. And then what, what is perhaps somewhat new is that we're coming with an approach with a vision and with a lot of input from different stakeholders, which we'll present uh, throughout and um, to come with a best practice and a way that we can best optimize DHIS2 then for uh, stock management and logistics management. All right, so without further ado, I will move to the agenda. And just also quickly to say that uh, you can interact with us through the chat in, on Zoom or through the community of practice, which. Uh, Alice shared a link to, so you can post your questions there and we'll try to get to them. And secondly, that this session will be immediately followed by a uh, LMIS expert lounge. So we'll also share the link to that where you can connect to a platform where we can uh, interact, continue the discussions and everybody can kind of uh, mingle and, uh, and connect, all right? So going through the agenda, as I mentioned, we'll present to you the uh, LMIS vision for DHS2, go through some functionality, use cases, and also talk about triangulation of health and stock data, which is an important aspect of uh, this uh, LMIS uh, use case. And then we're very happy to have also some of our technology partners also in, on the call and, and presenting. So first we'll go to M Supplying Craig Drown, uh, who will be presenting uh, their platform and some of the work we've done with integration. Uh, uh, extra thank you to Craig. It's uh, He's based in New Zealand, so it's past midnight for him there. So a big thank you that he's participating with us here now. <laughs> Thanks for that. We'll then be followed by Medexis with Per Kronslev and Landry Medigan. Uh, we'll also talk about our work together and then open boxes with Kelsey Nagel and Justin Miranda, who will also talk about some of the work we've done um, around this sort of uh, approach to using DHS2 and then integrating with these ELMIS uh, uh, platforms. All right, so without further ado, let me get into the presentation then on end user stock management uh, system for effective logistics management and improved health service delivery. So here we want to emphasize again that for DHS2, it's the end user aspect that we uh, uh, we're focusing on and then that it should inform your logistics management, your supply chain management, but also the quality of the health service delivery. And I'll start by quickly going through an as is, or perhaps a maybe scenario, which you may identify with in part or totally, but at least some aspects of this should be uh, something that you can relate to, uh, depending on your experiences within uh, logistics and stock management. So quickly, just to represent here then within a country or program, you would have a central and perhaps a regional or district warehouse where you're distributing uh, medicines and health products down to a level of distribution. So this is the point of care where you're actually dispersing uh, and consuming. So either a hospital, a health center or community health worker. And then of course, patients who are then receiving this, uh, these medicines or, or uh, treatments. Uh, you then have data being captured. So you have your data flow starting at that point for uh, at the end user level. And then that's being shared upstream, uh, paper-based or God forbid you're using Excel you're then capturing this data and sharing it somehow to then inform decisions, demand planning, forecasting, and so on. Now, again, you may identify with one or more of these, but uh, uh, I'll just go through a, a, a sort of a number of issues that may arise. Um, and first it's touching on the availability of, of medicines and products where you need them at the right time in the right quantity um, and to avoid any overstock, uh, to avoid stockouts, and that you have these available. And perhaps having a paper-based system is not the most ideal or efficient for that. Uh, again, there, paper-based or also Excel-based is not perhaps the ideal. You're not having readily av available data uh, upstream to inform your, um, your resupply. And also you may have a challenge with having access to historical data to be able to analyze uh, what the consumption has been and to inform future de decisions. 
This may also be done in a siloed uh, way. So it may be specific programs are using a system, may be using a, you know, a digital system and it may be working fine, but it's not something that will cover um, globally all products within a, a specific organization or within let's say a ministry of health. And there may be a plurality of systems. So maybe the uh, persons working on the distribution or on the healthcare are needing to use multiple systems. Um, and this may create complexity and confusion and lack of overall visibility. Um, insufficient integration among systems may also create some level of a, uh, inefficient or, or lack of overview. Insufficient data to provide this visibility for the end-to-end -end supply. And as I mentioned before, also complexity for the end user if they're having to use multiple systems or even lack of systems or systems only for certain programs. So then I come to the first uh, use case for DHIS2. And that, again, uh, keeping our same structure here for uh, health product distribution, it's then using DHIS2 at this end user level, uh, uh, using a mobile device to then capture this stock data directly within DHIS2. <clears throat> this would then uh, move away from having any kind of paper-based or Excel-based kind of reporting and would um, help with uh, having offline capacity also with uh, the DHS2 mobile app. You would capture data digitally uh, and, and sort of once and for all. You would be able to build dashboards and analytics, both for these users and users at any level that have access to DHS2 would be able to have this data as, as soon as it's input into the system and you can create then uh, indicators and, uh, and to follow on uh, your stock management. Uh, we also have the capacity to have a product catalog, which would be relevant for that end user, and also some cold chain uh, 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 management possibilities. This is in the case that there's no integration with an upstream system. So here, just to quickly clarify that the upstream system would be um, a full-scale, full-fledged logistics management system or an ERP that's maybe being run at a national level, at a central level, and downstream would be at this point of care at the hospital health center or the community health worker level. So then if DHS2 is working on its own, we can still provide this uh, level of functionality. And as I mentioned before, you have your data available within the system, no matter where you are, so long as you have access to the DHS2 platform. So this is sort of a first step, a first use case for using DHS2 for stock management. The second use case is similar. Um, it's still using it at this end user level. It's providing all of these benefits, but then we're discussing or we're then proposing an integration with this full-fledged upstream system. So you would have uh, what the system that you're using then for uh, your supply at a central level could be connected with DHS2. Data can be shared between the systems and the um, benefits would be that you would need to collect less data at the end user level uh, a lot of the data could be deduced from the um, from the data being produced in the ELMIS, and you can provide also uh, forecasting and planning, stock replenishment. It would inform order management, and you could even do uh, deduce a, a batch and expiry management for each facility based on a deduction. Uh, if we're following the first expiry, first out principle, so there's a lot more, um, let's say, uh, features that can be used. And there should be a more simplified level of data capture for the end user, given this model. All right. So this is sort of a second step. Both of these two first steps are uh, also to, to specify that they're based on reporting. Uh, so this would be daily, weekly, but ideally monthly reporting of stock levels and whatever other uh, logistics data you're capturing. So this would be monthly reports, which are then synchronized and shared with the, uh, with the ELMIS. And then we come to the use case three, where we then have the same um, uh, integration, but then we're looking at using the tracker program, which would be uh, a transaction-based system. So you would be capturing every transaction uh, using our tracker app, also a mobile app with the same offline capabilities. Uh, but then here now, you're really only recording a stock uh, that's issued. Uh, we would use barcode scanning for ease of use and uh, all of the other uh, uh, let's say data points and indicators could be uh, calculated between the systems. You have this integration with the ELMIS and this is actual real-time data. So uh, for the monthly reporting, of course, it would come, uh, you would have the data available once it's input and reported on, but now you're recording every transaction and this is up to the minute uh, data, let's say. Um, 
And of course, in the upstream system, you would have indicators, uh, automatic calculated, automatic alerts for shortages and stockouts, and all of the other benefits mentioned previously, uh, beginning with the digitization all the way down to, as I mentioned, the automatic alerts. So this is kind of the third and uh, the most ideal uh, use case that we foresee. And um, yeah, kind of the standard that we would try to work towards. Um, quickly to summarize then these uh, proposed functionality between the systems uh, with the same idea of upstream and downstream system here uh, from left to right. If we start at the on the right column at the facility level at the point of care, then it's using DHS2 for your stock management, order management, performance management dashboards, and the cold chain product catalog and eventually track and trace capability. So this is within DHS2 mobile app. In the upstream system in the full-fledged ELMIS, you would have your uh, uh, full functionality. And then some of this uh, data would then be shared with DHS2 as mentioned before. So your demand planning and forecasting so that at the facility, you can see, all right, based on the numbers that they have for my facility, this is the order that I'll be receiving you know, within a, a week's time or, or however uh, time it is for, for delivery. And they can have an overview of what's happening. Uh, and this data would then be shared back to DHS2. So it's not simply capturing data in DHS2, but it's mainly that and sharing upstream, but also having indicators being calculated and some information shared back into the uh, uh, to the end user to also inform them, inform their decision making. Quickly on the architecture then, and we will not spend a lot of time. This is definitely something we can elaborate more on and discuss more with our interoperability and integration team and also in the experts lounge, but just quickly to show that within this sort of, uh, again, generic uh, Ministry of Health structure, um, as we foresee DHS2 used at all levels for your health management information, uh, capturing analysis and uh, visualization. For DHS2, it's really only at this end user level that uh, it's being used. You have your uh, national full-scale, full-fledged ELMIS solution, and we can work on an integration one-to-one uh, -one with that, or that there may be an interoperability layer, something already existing, which we can also connect through. And there's already existing uh, examples of these um, that have done, been done previously, so both are quite uh, uh, attainable uh, solutions. All right. Moving on, and I think this is uh, stages for implementation, or as we see it, uh, sort of digital evolution. This is, um, first of all, how we go from the as is to the one of the use cases one, two, or three. And we kind of see it as, as a step ladder to getting to that third use case. So first it's uh, working on an assessment phase, uh, conducting an as is analysis and uh, making that as uh, real as possible to the specific context, identifying the workflows and systems and also limitations, then identifying an ambition level of where uh, which level you want to attain and how much resources you have in order to, to reach that and then developing a roadmap for, for implementation. We then foresee a transition phase where perhaps you would first implement this first use case, simply digitizing the, the facilities, having uh, uh, users uh, using the DHS2 mobile app to capture stock um, and doing some pilots uh, and developing some dashboards and seeing how that uh, improves uh, uh, supply and uh, demand planning as well. And then eventually moving to a full implementation, working on an integration with an upstream system, and then eventually moving from the report-based uh, system to the tracker transaction-based system. Uh, so this is sort of a phased approach or a stepped approach where you would start um, with the assessment and then move through the use cases. Um, one thing also perhaps to, to specify here is that, again, when we're speaking about the facility level or the uh, um, at this end user level, it may well be a, a health worker, uh, not a pharmacist or a dedicated logistics person capturing the stock data. So having a health person who's already using the DHS2 mobile app to capture some health data, simply input some stock data um, is also a way of reducing potential uh, issues and making this more of a fluid transition to capturing also stock at that level. Um, and uh, it's one of the benefits that we see. Now, I'll quickly, the next two slides, I'll just quickly show the, the, the report and the transaction-based systems. Uh, and then immediately after, uh, George will provide a quick demo for us um, for this uh, report-based system. So this is more or less a screenshot 
of the uh, data entry form, uh, which George will go through with us. And this is for the use case one and two, as I mentioned previously. Uh, this is really defining or, uh, a few different uh, data points that you need to identify before inputting your values. And then you have the tracker, uh, the transaction-based system where you would then, uh, we could build a product catalog, uh, use the barcode scanning to identify items, and then go through a few steps for resupply, distribute items to patients, counter stock on hand, uh, capture any discarded or wastage, and also stock redistributed to other facilities. Now, this is already a functional um, uh, program, uh, and we can uh, use it as of now. Uh, what we're looking to do is to optimize it to make it a bit more user friendly when we're dealing with, you know, 100 plus 200 plus items. Uh, at the moment, we highly we would recommend it for uh, maybe for a specific program if you're dealing with 10 or 20 items. And what we're looking to do, and, and you'll see that in our way forward, is to optimize this to be able to use it for as many items as you might need to manage across programs. So now let me just hand over quickly to George, who will do a quick demo before I continue with the presentation. Okay, <clears throat> thanks a lot, <clears throat> Breno. So my name is George McGuire, working in Oslo as a LMIS technical advisor. Uh, Breno, can you see my screen? Is it shared? Yeah, we see that. Okay, great. So I make it 120%, so it's a bit larger. So I don't know, uh, some of you might not be very familiar with DHIS2 or with logistics. So this is a usual data entry form in DHIS2 where you can select the country and your organization units or your healthcare facility. Uh, we have different um, uh, prototypes, but we are basically uh, looking at the, the data entry form layout using individual data elements, which is a conventional way that uh, DHIS2 works. And um, one thing that is very important, you can see the simplicity of the screen. So we are really uh, limiting the data that we want to collect at the end user level to the absolute minimum. We don't want to uh, burden a staff, as Breno said, which might not be dedicated logistics staff or so healthcare workers uh, with uh, logistics tasks. We want to make it as efficient as easy for them so that they can spend as much time as possible uh, for providing healthcare for the patients. So as uh, in DHS2, this is uh, assumption is that this is a monthly uh, reporting form. So you can select the month. So let's say I'm reporting on June and we have the different um, logistics data that we want to collect as individual tabs. So this was also, this was basically elaborated together with the World Health Organization to limit the number of stock data to their absolute essentials that cannot be, uh, that are not available elsewhere and cannot be calculated. So you have the stock received, the stock that were issued uh, or distributed, commonly called uh, consumption. Then we cater for the situation where you might have stock that you are sharing with another nearby uh, facility because they have a shortage or because you have ex stock, excess stock, then hopefully rare, but it can always happen that you have to discard stock because it was damaged or maybe because it is expired. And then the, the main point for the storekeepers is to carry out their monthly stock count. So you will here have a list of, of data elements. So these are your items or commodities for which you're calculating for which you're recording the stock data. And all you need to do is basically once a month, ideally on a mobile device directly um, next to the shelf in the healthcare facility, in the hospital or in the clinic, collect the data. Let's say I have 45 bottles of povidone. as so I will count my stock and enter the data and then count my tetracycline and then my amoxicillin tablets, let's say 13,000. So you see there's really, this is, um, replicates the workflow that you normally have as a storekeeper. So once a month, you will count your, your stock and go through all the items, count them and enter the stock on hand. So this is as simple as, a, as it gets. You just have a table with the items and the quantities that you enter. And then if you, have, if you find that there's a discrepancy on your stock card or your bin card, so that the stock on hand that you count it doesn't match with the stock issues and stock receipt, then uh, hopefully that is rare, but you have the opportunity of 
entering a stock correction, which could be positive or negative to adjust so that your calculated end balance matches uh, with the actual physical stock on hand. And there's also a possibility in DHIS2 we envisage on the dashboard to calculate any such discrepancies, to have an analytics dashboard, which will notify the storekeeper of any items where these uh, stock balances don't add up to the uh, recent stock count. And then <clears throat> stock out days is commonly um, recorded as a, as a performance indicator. So this one will have to be taken from manual records, but it can be entered into DHIS2 to have uh, a record uh, month by month record. So this is very briefly on what it looks like, again, to stress the simplicity. So it should be easy to teach anybody quickly, including uh, non-specialists, uh, non-logisticians. Uh, um, so I will briefly present some dashboards that are, are already available from the WHO uh, metadata packages and which will be the, the model for our future ELMS metadata package. So on the, I will go fairly quickly. We can always discuss details in the expert lounge. So on the left side, you can see a map of this fictitious country where you can see the facilities that had at least one stock out, um, have at least a stock out on, a, on one item during the reporting month. Then the next map here with the, with the blue and the green dots, I think is really interesting. As Brennan pointed out, you can use DHIS2 even if you're not integrated with an upstream ELMIS system. So if you have the, if you're only collecting data at the healthcare facility level, you might wonder, you know, what's the benefit? It's just isolated data. But actually, this uh, dashboard that was uh, developed by Scott from Malawi is really powerful and is in use there. Here you can see the coverage time. So that's the number of months that your stock will last if your consumption does not change in the future. That's just an assumption. And here you can see, for example, you have this facility here, uh, Fly Hospital Gateway, which has a shortage of this uh, PCG uh, vaccine. And now the important point is that at the same time, the uh, program manager healthcare worker at this facility can also see on the map, the blue points, which are facilities which are actually overstocked. And chances are that one of the overstock facilities will be able to share some stocks uh, with a facility that has a shortage until they receive their resupply from the district or the provincial medical store. So I think this is really interesting. Uh, facilities which have excess stock can see where they can share the stocks. And if you have a shortage, uh, you can um, obtain hopefully stocks from a nearby facility without having to prompt an emergency order to your district stores. On the table next to it, you can see basically the same, the same uh, data as a table. So you can see Fly Hospital Gateway PHC, which has uh, zero stock on, on this, uh, of this uh, vaccine. And then if you take, uh, again, if you look at the stock availability, which is the, the main indicator that uh, uh, logisticians are looking at because the main objective of a logistician is to ensure that all the goods that are needed for the patients and healthcare professionals are available at all times and to avoid any stockouts. You can see for this PGD, PCG vaccine, uh, the percentage of facilities, in this case, there's 79.5% uh, of the facilities are overstocked and 19% uh, um, have a stockout and 9.5% um, are understocked. So you can imagine there is, um, I mean, the DHS2 analytics is very developed. You can make a huge number of different uh, charts in all shapes and form. Um, I will show one more from, from the Malaya dashboard that is also available with uh, WHO metadata packages. And that is where you can see the different uh, stock data that I showed before that you can collect on a monthly basis. Uh, as a time series over the past months. So you can say this is trivial, but imagine that you're a storekeeper, you probably have monthly records or you have the, the stock on hand at the end of every month indicated with a red pen on your stock card. But here you can actually go on the table and you can uh, select any item and you can see for each of the months in the past, for the six or 12 months in the past, your stock on hand, your stock issues, 
the stock receipt, which is very useful for anal analysis. And you can do that without having to re-enter your data into an Excel file or processing it otherwise. Okay, I think with this, I hand it uh, back over to Breno, thank you. Okay, thanks a lot for that, George. Uh, let me just get back into the uh, presentation here. All right, so that was great. That's pretty much the, uh, the report-based uh, uh, data capture and then also some of the uh, analytics. Uh, I'll just take a step back and just go through this then uh, triangulation of health and stock data. And that's partly what George uh, already presented with these dashboards and part of the power uh, of what you can uh, provide when you have the stock and health data in the same location. All right, so when we speak about triangulation, we're talking about the synthesis of two pieces of data to address relevant questions for program planning and decision making. So then the focus to triangulate data from routine aggregate health reporting, so the regular health reporting, and then bring that together with the stock or logistics data report. Um, the indicators, again, as George mentioned, based on WHO, uh, uh, but also UNICEF and CDC uh, recommendations. And then that this is uh, some of what I'll present is uh, also um, based on tests conducted by our implementation team on the visualization and dashboards in different countries. So I won't go over the same ones. Uh, this is what George also presented previously, but showing then a national level overview where you have overstock and understock. Um, also the same comparison here with doses given uh, versus do uh, stock used to compare um, then the health to the stock data and see if there's any large discrepancies. Here evidently there's an issue with uh, uh, perhaps data capture, but then you can analyze further to see what the issue is. Uh, the same providing wasted rates on the far right in the chart where you have color coded there and yellow, green, and pink then is showing sort of acceptable or unacceptable rates, uh, wasted rates, which you can then dig deeper to find in the issue. Um, and then uh, again, another example of the uh, um, stock uh, levels and also by facility. And then this ability to identify stockouts and redistribute stocks. Um, and this can be done for a number of items, as you see here on the same overlay on the same maps, having different items with their availability. So quite a lot of uh, possibilities. Uh, now from a, a specific example from Togo, this is where uh, they also use then um, the dashboards to identify under immunized children, bringing together some um, uh, population data and looking at vaccination rates to identify regions where you had higher or lower vaccination rates for children for specific uh, uh, antigens. And here, another dashboard showing indicators as a proportion of children immunized per antigen. Um, and this um, is a ratio. So you're trying to be as close as possible to one um, and identifying where you have more or less efficient uh, 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 rates of um, uh, vaccination. And of course, you can look for then uh, conduct corrective action based on the output, either checking for data entry error, check if stock inventory data is correct, checking how doses are being tallied, and then also monitoring and monitoring facilities that are having issues that are having, a, um, let's say, less efficient uh, uh, um, administration of, of uh, vaccines. And uh, this is a type of information that can lead then to corrective action. And I think that's one of the points that we really want to emphasize is having dashboards, data, and indicators that are leading to action that will improve uh, and not simply to just show and report, which is fine, but also to lead to corrective action to improve the quality of services. Here now is an example of cold chain equipment monitoring. So this is from uh, Mali and Togo, where there was uh, a testing of this with manual input of uh, temperatures and simply capturing where you had a uh, uh, an alert, where you had temperatures uh, going outside of uh, parameters, and then dividing that by specific regions to see where you needed to do some uh, assessment and conduct some uh, um, check of the uh, of the quality of the equipment. Here is the same using the map function. So then you could have uh, with the different uh, color coding, you have some very small, nearly insignificant uh, uh, dots there, just showing where you might have had a single uh, alert over a, a certain period, whereas the larger dots uh, signify uh, larger issues where you need to identify a, a solution and sort of dig deeper to find what the problem is and what the solution is to remedy the situation and avoid any losses of, of vaccines or other stock. 
And here, a final uh, chart showing uh, alerts by region. And here, um, it was surmised by this graph that more or less the, the more central, closer to capital uh, these regions were, or these sites were, the less uh, alerts would be received, whereas the more remote sites, you had a larger number of alerts. And this is just a way of showing that over time, uh, which sites perhaps need more attention and are more prone to um, having an issue with their cold chain and where you might risk then uh, losing uh, uh, vaccines and other valuable stocks. So quickly as a summary uh, and a way forward uh, to say that the main then priorities for, for George and I uh, working here now and with the team around this and with the others within the core team is really to finalize an LMIS metadata package uh, for aggregate reporting. So it's having a best practice and a package of uh, data and indicators that can be used for the stock uh, data management. It's uh, improving and sort of fine tuning that tracker transaction based system, which we showed previously to make it more adaptable for then managing hundreds of items and having uh, really uh, the full potential to manage, you know, uh, stocks across programs. And then uh, to facilitate integration for both of these approaches. So having design documents and standards and, uh, and really guidelines for any implementers looking to, uh, uh, to use any of these solutions that we're proposing. Um, we're looking to bring together stock and health data to provide an opportunity for in-depth analysis, as we showed a few examples here, but it's looking to then improve and build on this, because this is really only scratching the surface of what is possible when bringing this data together. And then we want to even lead, uh, have it lead to certain things such as predictive forecasting, where you have uh, clinical health data informing resupply so that if you have an outbreak, you can also adjust your supply to meet that coming need that you identified through your, uh, um, your surveillance activity. So it's really bringing together data from diverse sources together to then inform decision-making. Uh, generally, we've seen and it's been shown that these dashboards can be relatively easily developed and used by stakeholders for data monitoring analysis and that it does lead to corrective action and we want to continue to build on that. So that requires some effort, but it's not um, it, it's a very possible and fruitful uh, endeavor. Um, a specific project which we're working on then is also the uh, automated temperature data monitoring tool. So using Bluetooth sensors. And with that, we're looking to move away from manual reporting of temperature and go to a automated uh, um, solution with sensors. And of course, if there's any potential partners interested to support or pilot, please contact us and we're very open to cooperate on that as well. And then further developments in a few of those are track and trace capability and also anti-counterfeiting, where we would look to uh, add these functionality, uh, this functionality also for the end user uh, uh, level. All right, so those are the, some of the projects we're working on and some of our immediate and more longer term priorities. I also want to mention here that we're involved in quite a few, um, with quite a few different partners and some key ones here is to first mention our HISP network. So they're really uh, the first line of support and uh, implementation uh, that are present in, uh, in different regions uh, globally. Uh, they're supporting directly ministries of health and even uh, working uh, uh, in the Ministry of Health in some countries to uh, implement and develop further DHS2. And they're really um, our first line of information and that are really informing um, the decisions we're making. I think this is, if any of you were in the previous interoperability session, it's sort of informing that uh, aspect. And I think it was the first principle where a lot of the needs and developments for DHS2 and what's led to a lot of the successes in DHS2 is having that grassroots and country level need uh, at the forefront. So when the needs come from the country, we know that we're making a good decision to invest in that uh, feature and functionality. So our HISP network really helped with that. Also collaboration with uh, WHO, Global Fund, Gavi and others. Uh, a lot of the indicators and standards that we're working on is directly with WHO working groups. And of course, uh, uh, with some funding from uh, Global Fund and Gavi to help move a lot of this work forward and also some of their technical expertise. So they're also very uh, great collabor collaborators. And then we participate in the OpenHIE supply chain subgroup and that's where we're looking to then define and contribute to developing these standards and conventions that we can use for, for integration when we're talking about multiple systems uh, working together. 
And then two documents, which we also have used uh, quite uh, repeatedly, in addition to sort of academic uh, uh, papers that are there in the academic literature. It's the country guidance on selecting uh, uh, LMIS uh, from Global Fund and Gavi, and then the target software standards uh, uh, from Gavi as well, but I think endorsed by, by Global Fund. And these are two key documents which we've used, especially the target software standards, where we're looking to then uh, fulfill all of those requirements in an integrated uh, scenario. We're using the integration with an upstream system. We would meet all of these uh, requirements outlined in the document. And then uh, lastly, a key partnership that we have is with the Stella Center of Excellence, which is bringing together different partners and different organizations uh, and for uh, then our involvement really to improve uh, supply chain of, of health uh, products and improving uh, um, this collaboration within the field. And this is a, then a partnership uh, encompassing University of Oslo, uh, Novartis, University of Basel, and Swiss uh, Tropical and Public Health Institute. So a big thank you there as well, where we have both expertise and some funding uh, coming through this, uh, this cooperation and this partnership. So yeah, so these are our contacts if uh, you want to reach out and we're very open and uh, uh, looking to collaborate with others in any one of the topics which we've mentioned. Uh, we look forward to you engaging with us also in the expert lounge following this session. Uh, so please don't hesitate and we will share these uh, slides and these contacts uh, also in the in SCED. Um, so now I will transition to Craig and M Supply who will present so Craig, over to you. Thank you, Breno. And uh, yeah, I learned a lot from that as well. Thank you very much. Uh, hopefully I can share my screen. Let's see, how we go. Uh, it's looking like uh, that might not be allowed. Breno, are you able to pass on? Normally uh, you should be allowed, Craig. You are co-host. Okay, thank you. Let's try this. Dead center, the green button, perhaps. Uh, yeah, I'm, it's just showing uh, no uh, no desktops available. Uh, Bring out the same slide set that uh, I sent to you. Um, yeah, let me bring that up just a second. Yeah, it's, uh, if you're able to just use that, there's uh, something going on with Zoom here. It's just getting an error message when I'm trying to share. Some reason. One, I will share and I will go through. Just let me know when to switch. When uh, okay. I think uh, I need to uh, reduce 10 minutes down to about five minutes to leave enough time for the other presenters. So we'll, we'll go super fast. And uh, please excuse the rush, but you'll, uh, you'll get the slides for later consumption. Okay. Right, you thank you. Uh, yes, on to the next one. Thank you. All right. Um, yeah, so uh, we're the M Supply Foundation. So we're transitioning our work over uh, on 1st of April this coming year to have everything uh, done through the foundation. Uh, so uh, very similar aims to the DHAS2 project. And uh, we're also transitioning all our software over to being open source. Next, thanks, Bruno. Okay. so. Uh, actually up to about 35 countries now. And uh, I think we are on to our sixth and seventh languages uh, for M Supply Mobile. So uh, thank you. So uh, uh, Breno covered this pretty well. Uh, so I don't need to repeat all the details. Uh, uh, so uh, you had three different scenarios. So um, uh, we, we described it pretty much the same that uh, uh, the first scenario, uh, well, a little bit different in this case, and uh, this is used, uh, as the next slide mentions, in uh, Laos and uh, in Tonga, and uh, we've got Timor-Leste just in development at the moment. Um, can you go back a slide, Rene? Thank you. <laughs> so uh, at this point, uh, uh, you've got all your data in M Supply. And uh, DHIS2 is acting as um, uh, as an H HIS, and you're picking and uh, cherry picking selected data that you want to want to make available in your DHIS2 system. And uh, so that's been running in Laos for maybe three to four years now, and uh, I think has been very successful. I would say the success is um, 
not really just about the systems. It's due to a great local team who have paid a lot of attention to training, a lot of attention to data quality. Uh, and uh, without that, uh, whichever system you're using, you're not going to get very far. Thank you. So, um, uh, yeah, so that's that's one way of doing it. And uh, uh, we can move on to the next one. So uh, at this point, uh, this is what we've been had a bit of fun in the last few weeks uh, working with the DHIS2 team on. Uh, we you're using at the facility level, you're you're capturing per periodic uh, uh, data uh, using DHIS2's app or via uh, a browser that goes to DHIS2 and uh, then on a schedule, uh, M Supply can pull that data down and use it to fulfill orders. So, uh, uh, oops, sorry that. Uh, Last one, uh, the last, <laughs> the red arrow should actually say um, physical supply of goods back to the facility. So uh, that one's uh, got a break, in, a little bit of a break in the chain uh, there from uh, um, uh, uh, data completeness and that um, we don't have a way at the moment to inform the facility of uh, what has been supplied. So uh, I think we could work with the DHIS2 team on that in the future. Okay. Uh, Thanks, Bruno. So uh, here's, a, here's a quick example using the same um, uh, data set that uh, was used in the previous presentation. So there's a uh, periodic uh, report uh, and on the next slide uh, that's on a schedule being pulled into M-Supply uh, where it's able to be used to fulfill an order. So, yeah, and uh, there's, uh, uh, I think uh, one of the one of the great things about uh, these sort of uh, variety of models is that uh, you can take into account all the ex all the um, external factors in a country, like um, what soft what software are they already using, uh, what's their local capacity, uh, and uh, what have they been trained in, and uh, you can put those pieces together in a way that uh, provides the best outcomes for the country. So uh, it's great to have options. Thanks, Bruno. Uh, right. Um, oh, sorry. So this was the third, the third uh, uh, in our in our uh, second example. The the yeah, making the point that um, uh, this this step is still uh, manual supply of stock, and we need to work together on how to actually uh, link the systems up to uh, for supply verification. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so a couple of points there that uh, still still need solving, uh, as we mentioned, updating the facility with incoming stock. And um, I think the other issue is, uh, as the DHIS2 team worked to uh, something that's based on a transactional model, obviously requisitions have, have the issue that uh, you're getting a monthly snapshot of uh, what your stock was and uh, you don't have uh, visibility in between your reporting periods. Thank you. And uh, Bruno's very kindly said, take a couple of minutes to say what M-Supply does. So we'll go through very quickly. Uh, I think our, our uh, uh, main uh, unique uniqueness is that uh, we're very much uh, vertically integrated from end to end. So uh, right down to patient dispensing, and uh, these days with a mobile app also for COVID vaccine dispensing. And um, the other big uh, 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 feature that we've uh, has often saved countries, we would say, is the fact that it's offline first, so it works very well uh, with only intermittent internet. Uh, this is our mobile app, which is open source at the moment. So data synchronizes from this uh, through to DHIS2 uh, via our own cloud server. Uh, here it is uh, showing patient dispensing in a mobile app. So it's uh, full stock tracking, um, uh, patient directions uh, right, right through uh, on a named patient basis. Uh, we've just done uh, vaccine dispensing uh, for, it's been used very successfully in, uh, in Tonga in the South Pacific for their COVID vaccination program. Uh, they're expanding it out to use for other vaccines. It's been so successful. 
uh, Bluetooth sensors, and uh, uh, that's uh, we have WHO uh, qualification for those, and that's integrated into the stock management. Thank you, Bruno. Uh, we've got our own dashboards as well, so uh, Laos make good good use of uh, saying some data we just need locally and the, for the supply chain teams, and other data we need in DHOs too. Thank you. Uh, Myanmar is a country with a lot of challenges these last few months. Uh, uh, they do have a uh, very large uh, national program installing M supply. Thank you. Uh, initial designs for open M supply, uh, we're uh, underway and uh, we uh, will have a uh, new desktop open source uh, uh, public trial by uh, the end of the year. So thank you very much, much appreciated. All right, thank you for that. We'll go quickly then to Pear and Landry from Medexis, and I will share then your slides as well. One moment here. But go ahead, uh, Pear. So can you hear me? We hear you. Okay. Yes. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, so uh, first, uh, thank you to uh, Breno and Craig. Uh, well, so uh, I have a lot less slides actually, but so anyway, so, uh, what I'd like to, to talk about here is that we are working together with uh, DHIS2 on a concrete project, but also on a principle, you could say. Um, if you take the first slide, yes. Uh, so what you start with saying is we are having an ELMIS, uh, and it has the standard functionality of an ELMS, including uh, cold chain uh, management. But I'm not going through that right now. I want to try to explain what we're doing together with DHIS2. So the situation today in several countries, and also in a very concrete country we're working on, is that you got, of course, central medical store, which will usually have some sort of an ERP. You have a district store, you've got health facilities and you've got community health workers. And now uh, these, um, and the community health workers likely to be reporting on paper to health facility level. And it is not now these days, actually pretty uh, frequent, you have the health facilities and the district store reporting into a DHIS2 system. And you may also have a national dashboard of some sort from DHIS2 or from the ERP and or, or another way. So this is quite normal, right? But there are challenges also. So uh, there will be periodic logistics data reported, but it's not a transactional system. It's not an ELMIS. There's lots of things you cannot do. Um, that, so that's a common, that's a common situation. So what we are doing together with DHIS2 with our software Medexis is to be described in the next slide if you move to the next one yes so uh, slide is a little bit busy but i will try to explain it so what we do here now is we uh, we are well one of the big challenges with getting an elms out there is not so much to set up an elms because that's technically done and it's been done several times uh, but it's actually to roll it out, to make it happen and make it be maintained. Because you can take any country, you might talk a, a, a thousand to 4,000 health facilities. And if we include the community health workers, you may be talking 10,000 of those. So, and in the health facility level, you will have uh, maybe a quarter of the personnel changing every year. So, if you start putting out a piece of software that needs training, you will need retraining and retraining and follow up and so on and so forth. So this whole operation is actually the tricky part. This is what cost. It's not so difficult in a way to put up a piece of software in a few health facilities, to train people, make it work. But this is the big deal. This is the problem. This is a challenge. This is why it's not out there already. Now, some places, many places. So the thing is what we are going to do now uh, here is we want we're cutting back on the paper systems as far as possible uh, and we want to obtain the direct digital data from health facilities and community health workers via 
the existing DHIS2 interface, which they anyway are reporting on, both health facilities, some places also community health workers. So they will anyway be putting this into a DHIS2 screen. We can add to that screen, we can change it, we can do things to it, but we're not changing the interface. Uh, not really. And we're keeping it absolutely as simple as possible. That reduces our training cost. That reduces the main maintenance cost. That makes it more easy to make happen. Now, so then we move the data into DHIS2, but then we install our ELMS named Medexis and move the data into that one. So we can do the transactional things in that ELMS. It is sort of the same as Craig described uh, a few minutes ago. Uh, then <laughs> we would like to uh, have, well, he, he might agree, I don't know, but whatever. But um, anyway, uh, we would like then at district store level, we would not uh, limit to that. Then there they, we will have them using the Medexis with the full functionality, dashboards, uh, monitoring equipment, so on and so forth. But health facility, community health workers, they should stay on the DHIS2 screens. Um, so that's the, that's, this is the task we're working on. Uh, now we are having a dashboard here also in this table. That's because you often have a, a national staff dashboard already. Obviously, Medexis has a dashboard, but uh, we don't <laughs> want to change the dashboards. We want to move the data from Medexis and into their dashboard. Uh, now, we have a very concrete project going on, uh, which we are uh, really going to scale up, I hope, very soon. We are going into, we have done uh, these, some of these phases which Bruno was mentioning, so uh, analysis, start discussions, so on and so forth, and now we're going into the, the, we will hopefully very soon start the pilot, for real, uh, and that's in Mali. Uh, and in Mali, we are having a national dashboard already, I'm running. We are having a uh, <clears throat> sorry. We're having all the health facilities reporting uh, at in DHIS2. We do not have the community health workers reporting DHIS2. They're filling it in a, a large paper form. We would want to reach a situation where they fill in uh, a, a, a they use a tablet and put data directly into a DHIS2 form. So we capture that data. Air, do you mind if we wrap up so we have some time for the open boxes team as well? We're just at the end, and we can definitely continue this in the uh, next. Sorry, no. Well. Yeah, actually, that there was. A re I have only had those two slides. The message. I think message got across. We're trying to integrate. Yes. <laughs> Thank you so much, Pear, and we'll continue yeah. in the experts lounge with and, methods as well. Bruno, I think we can go a little bit longer um, since we are going to the expert lounge just after this. Okay. So, Thanks, Scott. Yeah. yeah. Do, do you want a, a final a final words, uh, Pear? <laughs> No, that's on. Okay, the message. Okay, a final word is the what we are doing here is getting an ELMS in there. But what we are really focusing at is keeping down the costs of implementation of maintenance and making it actually happening big scale by using the existing DHIS infrastructure by minimizing the extra work. That's the thing, and minimizing the cost. And, and, and making it as simple as possible and, and trying not to turn things up and down, but maintain what's there. That's it, over. Okay, thank you so much, Per, and thank you for mentioning then our uh, work with Molly. And I think that's a very good example to show that, again, with our approach, we're not looking to push the use of DHS2 for stock data, but we're looking to optimize it where it's already being used both for health and for stock as in Molly, and uh, then integrating with a system like yours, which is able to do the, uh, uh, again, the upstream functionality. So thanks again for that. So over now to Kelsey Nagel and Justin Miranda from Open Boxes. Uh, go ahead and thanks again, Scott. So we can go over a few minutes since uh, we'll be going into the experts launch for LMIS. All right. Um, would, do you want me to share, uh, share my screen? I think I, oh no, let's, let's see this stuff. Oh yeah, I think I can do that myself. Uh, can you share? Yeah, let me. Okay, that will be best, I think. So, let me move this. Can everyone see the screen? Oops. We see that, yeah. Okay, great. Um, so, uh, I'll basically just go over. Um, I think 
uh, everyone else has made really great points about uh, sort of the benefits and, and um, uh, you know, the, why you would uh, choose to, to use DHIS2 um, at the end user level. Uh, and I'll go through a couple of the benefits, but I, uh, I, uh, both Craig and, and Pierre have brought up things that I hadn't thought of, um, or at least uh, um, detailed them uh, a lot better than I did. Uh, but I'm just going to go through sort of the, the, a quick data flow of how, um, how we sort of uh, went through our proof of concept uh, for this. So uh, first of all, uh, open boxes is an open source uh, cloud-based or on-premise uh, inventory management system, warehouse management system sort of uh, uh, covers uh, use cases uh, both for inventory and, and warehouse and, and also for uh, some some ERP, but it's it's clearly not aligned with um, uh, with one single uh, use case. Um, features include, uh, you know, purchasing uh, in, inbound stock movements uh, that are, you know, sourced from donors, uh, being able to receive and put away uh, stock, um, creating stock levels to allow you to do reorders based on your stock levels, um, and also replenishment uh, from downstream systems. Uh, basically they, they would be able to enter their data if they um, so choose to use open boxes otherwise uh, open boxes is more likely to be used in a distribution center um, to to distribute uh, their stock to the to the downstream uh, consumers um, we also have product catalogs which are essentially used as uh, formularies for um, uh, you know for most of our sites and um, we have the beginnings of demand forecasting uh, within the system where we can um, we record all of the requisitions that are coming in from the downstream users and um, how we fulfill them and, and uh, whether there's been a stock out and things like that. Um, so we have a pretty good idea of what the demand signal is downstream um, and we can uh, provide both detailed information and uh, sort of a uh, an, an overview of what kind of stock is uh, available at the distribution center. Um, so I, yeah, so as I said, I, I just wanted to go through like what I saw or how we implemented um, uh, the proof of concept. And it starts with this awful screenshot that I took, um, actually a photo of a of a screen that I had to take because I couldn't get uh, Android to cooperate with me on taking a screenshot. Um, but you guys saw the uh, the really nice UI um, uh, from the DHIS2 mobile app. Uh, so you know what it could do. This is not giving uh, credit to, to that. Um, but basically, you know, the, the community health worker or pharmacist or, or whoever is entering uh, their monthly data into uh, a form within the, the mobile app. That data is being sent up to um, DHIS2, and uh, uh, you know it's recorded there, and um, can be validated and, and edited uh, if necessary um, per period. And then the open boxes or whatever uh, LMIS you're using would go and grab that data and pull it down. For our case, um, we are we deal with everything is at the transaction level so this data needs to be mapped to a transaction uh, within our system so you would say uh, we would go and pull um, you could see we've got uh, stock issues uh, redistributed discarded uh, corrections and stock on hand and here you can see that we've mapped a uh, transaction type for each one of those so we can record um, pull the data from dhis2 and actually put it into um, the, the, the data here uh, and you'll also notice that we have a receipt here, um, which is something that uh, we can then push back to DHIS2 um, in, uh, you know, as a as a as a uh, uh, an aggregated um, data or aggregated value for the month um, for all the receipts that that came in. Uh, in addition, we could push other data like uh, demand for, uh, demand values or forecasting values. Uh, any number of things we could we could push back to DHIS2 um, uh, as well to, to, to sort of provide a better, um, uh, I guess, uh, picture of, of what's happening at that uh, downstream uh, consumer. 
uh, in a, and, and that would allow you to build whatever, um, uh, you know, dashboard uh, reports and, and things like that that you would need. Um, the one thing that we didn't really explore, but that I've been excited to work on is uh, how we would use uh, DHIS2 at the distribution uh, level um, within our depots and warehouses to push um, sort of that aggregate level up and, and stock outs and things like that. Um, and we haven't explored that yet, but that, that's something that I'd uh, like to look into in the next uh, couple of months. Uh, in conclusion, um, these are the benefits of, of this kind of implementation. Uh, you would, you would, you know, uh, improve the service delivery by allowing the distribution center to, to forecast the needs of the downstream uh, consumers and push stock based on consumption rather than, uh, letting the, the downstream consumer say, this is what I need. Uh, please give it to me. Um, sometimes if there's not confidence in the supply chain, uh, you, you might get uh you know an over there might be an over forecast uh at the at the lower levels and so they're going to be asking for double um because they don't want to run out uh in the middle of the month uh with a system like this where you've got all your downstream consumers uh entering their data and sending it back up to dhis2 um and and being pulled into the lmis there's the ability to to actually know um what uh the read it redistribution um, situation was like, what the, you know, how much was uh, issued, consumed, and it gives a better picture and, and would allow for this, uh, if necessary, to, a, sort of a push replenishment system, um, which would be great. Uh, in addition, it, it, it uh, increases data quality because it, it sort of bridges the gap. Um, we, we have from a distribution center, uh, you know, let's say uh, our distribution center in Haiti, we send out to uh, somewhere on the order of 12 different um, sites. And we don't actually know what, uh, like of that stock, what was consumed, what expired, what was damaged, um, things like that. And having this information sent back up uh, to, to the distribution center, it gives us a, a way of reconciling uh, the difference between, you know, um, what was issued and, and what was consumed and say, okay, well, we, we might need to, you know, have some initiative here to deal with expiring stock. We can't send anything that's like expiring within three months, for example, uh, um, uh, down, downstream uh, and things like that. So, um, and the also a, a point that was brought up is the you know reducing deployment time reducing like the the maintenance uh that is involved um we've been working in haiti on uh, uh on with open boxes for about 10 years 11 years and we still have don't have uh open boxes is not being you know being used at that at those lower levels at, in all um, locations and that you know is due to internet issues electricity issues or just we don't have the staff to to, to um to have somebody you know log in and, and tran uh record all these transactions uh so given that like it would be great to have um a system that could easily uh, be used offline could be used uh uh you know uh, by by pharmacists by by any you know staff within the the hospital to enter the data you know they're already entering it uh, entering it for their monthly like Ministry of Health report so uh, it 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 isn't um, a huge uh, burden um, to to add you know um, or to replace that system with uh, th this uh, DHIS two like mobile uh, data capture and. Um, uh, I think it's a you know a very simple way to capture the data and, and report it back and and it it sort of um, uh, I don't know it's uh, it, it 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 gives us uh, the the visibility that we need uh, at the lower levels or at the downstream uh, consumer level uh, that we need um, so uh, let's see for next steps uh, we've got a roadmap uh, we're hoping to work uh, more with open oh, HIV. Is that it? Anyway, I'll leave this uh, up. Um, the, these are some of the things that we're looking to do. Uh, data mapping, real-time data flows, like either having web hooks within DHS. Um, or, uh, or, or using event streaming or something like that, uh, adopting data standards 
and uh, decoupling the systems right now where we, we've got a pretty tight uh, coupling uh, between the APIs of the systems. So um, that's about it. Um, this is sort of the picture of what we would like things to look like, but you can replace open boxes with any um, LMIS. You can, uh, you know, use whatever you'd like to for product catalog. Open boxes could be used for the product catalogs, um, you know, uh, OpenMRS is a candidate for electronic medical records. So we just want to work with all of these groups to, to, to build this, uh, maybe create reference implementations for, um, for organizations, build up the metadata packages, things like that. And uh, that is it. Um, and I found out yesterday that it's National Let It Go Day today um, in the US. So I don't know if anyone needs to hear that, but that's... All right. Enjoy. Thanks a lot, Justin. Uh, sounds like an American holiday. Um, <laughs> all right. So everybody, I think uh, I, I shared the link to the uh, gather town where we can connect and continue the discussion. So if we all meet there, we can discuss in plenary one on one and just continue this, uh, these talks. All right. So uh, thanks a lot to all the presenters, uh, uh, Craig, Justin, Pear, and uh, George as well, and uh, hope to keep the discussion going. And again, feel free to reach out to any one of us. I'm sure we'd be happy to, to engage. All right, thanks again.